Hey everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's in the Tube, or welcome back if this is your fourth Doom Patrol Season 3 episode review. It's weird wearing this mask again. I, I wore it for like three days straight, kind of, technically not really. And I'm back in it again. It, this week has gone by so fast. Um, that, I think that's just one of the aspects of doing like a tr traditional Monday to Friday slot of work and then having the weekends free to myself. Um... I don't even know where I was going with that, because this week on Doom Patrol, I almost called it The Walking Dead, because literally it kind of felt like an episode of The Walking Dead. Well, because there's zombies. Ironically, Marvel did zombies too earlier last month. Oh my god, wait, was it this month? Te technically, this episode is going live in October. So, technically, I am right? I, 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 I don't know what the case may be. I, I don't know. Um, but this week on Doom Patrol, they, they continue the flow. They really did, um... I, four episodes in, um, normally by this point of a season, we would understand what the story is. And besides this new woman who they finally gave a name, um, but I completely forgot the name. Even I forgot the fake name they gave her throughout this entire episode. I am still baffled. Like, what is the story? Like, I know she's part of the story, but like, who's the big bad? Like, we already knew about Candlemaker last season by this point. Uh, we knew about Mr. Nobody, but who's the villain? Like, if you're going to say the Brotherhood of Evil, like, oh, it's them. It's like, I don't know about that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Like, you know, they, they, got, they got to specifically tell us, like, okay, um, Arrow's taking on Damien Dark. Flash is taking on Zoom. Uh, you know, I'm sounding very 2016 in my references, but th that's kind of where my brain is going first. I need to know. But besides that, th this fun little, like, we're connecting the dots. Like, every episode since episode two leads into, like, the next episode's events, two to three. They're dead. Three to four. Now they're zombies. And I am all for it to see. Wait, I don't even know. Like, how does a zombie virus plague robot? Man? How, how does it plague Cliff? He's a robot. He's not technically alive. And technically, that makes no sense. But I'm like, it's the logic of the show. Um, but I found myself laughing. And I think for the first time in the, the history of the show, and I've done now, this is 246. Uh, is it 246? Let me do the math in my head. Uh, two, 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 two. Is it 246? I forgot. Uh, I gotta recheck my numbers, but... Anyway, we're, we're over 245 episodes in, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I nearly threw up, which is like a very rare thing. I haven't... Fr I've been vomit-free since... 2000 and... Did I throw up in 2012? I forgot. I, I haven't thrown up in, like, ages. I haven't. This episode made me close. Because there was like that one particular scene in the end. I'm like, this is supposed to be a somber moment. But at the same time, I just want to throw the hell up. It, it's done so well that it actually, like, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a viewer out there who actually did throw up to this episode. I wouldn't be surprised. But anyway, let's go for the butcher because I can actually talk about this a little bit more into depth. Um, so we begin with not Crowley. Um... Uh, the, I freaking like it starts with a W his real name, but I I'm, I'm literally blanking on it for some reason. Now Crowley, who the last time we saw took, well he sliced off Niles's um, corpse, um, the head of his corpse off, and he has sort of resurrected him in a way, or just like tapped into his mind, his voice. I guess I I don't know the magic about this, but he does. Um, but the the convenient thing is that he sews in like a a vocal box. So you could say, like, well, it's not Niles, but it's a disembodied voice, but it's just, it's just sounding like Niles. We don't really know. Um, honestly, this is kind of a spoiler for the end. Like, I, I was kind of hoping this would be, like, the new shit. Like, yeah, Niles is still around, but he's not there. Like, we don't need Timothy Dalton outside. We just need a very convincing Timothy Dalton head and just have him do ADR from... I think he lives in London now, or if he, somewhere in the UK. I, I, I don't entirely remember where he lives now. I, I don't keep track of celebrities' address or anything. I honestly thought that was going to be the shtick they were going to go with for the rest of Season 3. And honestly, I am glad they didn't do that. And I'm also kind of bummed they didn't get to do this. It's kind of like a weird like um, win-lose sort of thing. Because I like Niles. I like Timothy Dalton. He, he's, a, he's a really great actor. And I, uh, I would have loved to see what shenanigans they would have gotten with his disembodied head. It would have been fun. And it does create, a, it's a creative solution to like, we don't have, during COVID times, like, okay, we don't have to fly out Timothy Dalton here, but he can still be part of the show. But at the same time, like, what more could you do with Niles? Like, you know, he's a disembodied head. Technically, he's dead. 
Like, you know, he, he's never going to come back. And Dorothy's off with the um, the Dead Boy Agency. So he would have honestly been like, maybe I should join them. Maybe I should join that that cast already with a freaking um, rumors they're going to recast them for the, for their own show, which I'm like, freaking don't. Just don't, HBO Max, just don't. Now, Seth... But just seeing him just in this episode alone, I think it was just great. Like, he was only there when he was needed to. And every scene he's been in, it's like, I either feel sad or I, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing my head off. And he, he and um, Not Crowley were about to go on another one of their classic shticks. But then someone breaks in and Not Crowley already knew, like, oh, fuck. This again. Um, so we come back over to the Doom Patrol Manor. Um, this mysterious woman is preparing them a hot cup of tea and sat to say my cup of tea already finished and it's all, all the way over there in the corner of my of my space. I'm very sad. Um, everyone's obviously asking the question, who are you? She's asking, where's Niles? So we reached an impasse here. They're not going to give enough information until she gives them some information. But however, for her, it's like, I don't know anything about myself. I'm here. I lived here for, for, for some time. I watched this freaking... Bandage man bandage you all up and start playing with you and everyone was like what the hell is Larry doesn't even excuse him so he says I, I was in a very bad place leave me be uh, she doesn't know anything she just knows about Niles and that she, she has to find him she has to see him she has to talk to him ask him a bunch of questions um, that's all she wants uh, and then she was claiming like oh, the only thing else I know is that I'm a time traveler I've been around the around you know every single aspect of time Cliff <sighs> Again, I'm, I just love him too much. Like, he's just so... He's just so funny. Even, like, this ex exposition moment she's trying to give out to them. He's even, like, saying, like, Oh, if I had a time travel machine, like, I would easily go back into when I was a kid to beat up my bully. And I'm just like... Of every time period you would want to go back to, you're going back to when you were... You know, never mind. Let, let, let Cliff do his own thing. Um, so she proves it to them by actually showing her them the time machine. I'm gonna make them honest with you, and it, it's kind of it could be just being me and my brain, like you know, getting ready for next month with um, what, we're, what we're gonna do. Honestly, she kind of acts like the Doctor a few a few times. If you don't know who I'm talking about, I mean Doctor Who. Um, also, we also do every Doctor Who series review, which we're about to come back in November for part two. Wink. Um, so it could just be me getting the, um, that that ideas back in my brain again to get ready for that show. I don't know, she kind of acts some moment. Not, she's not, a, she, she's definitely not the doctor. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there were moments where, like, she kind of could be a doctor. Like, like I, I forgot the actress's name who plays this one. I'm, I'm pretty sure she's going to be coming back for season four. We'll see how far we go ahead with this. Honestly, she would make a good follow-up. Like, she's at the charm in there. I wouldn't be surprised if she was in, Do in Do Doctor Who already. Um, and I'm pretty sure... George, I'm pretty sure either I will look up on the internet after this episode review and then I will text George like, oh yeah, this and this and that and he's going to completely stop me. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, So they show him the time machine and she's explaining how it's going to work and and then they go for a l Honestly, this this next scene reminds me of uh, this is a very weird reference. Like, um, I was remembering um, Jim Partner's a monkey. If you remember that Cartoon Network animated show. And let me tell you what. It, there was an episode, I think it was later on towards the end of that run where they were just casually referencing previous episodes, and the whole joke of it was like it was involving this um, whale teacher, and the joke was, "Oh yeah, after that, Mister Blowhole's blowhole will never be the same again." And it was just so freaking funny. Like they just casually name drop like other adventures they had to the newer ones, which I kind of never like. I never like it when they reference the old ones because it means like we're running out of ideas of jokes, so we're just, you know, hey, remember that thing or that thing, but. Honestly, it works here because Doom Patrol is not that deep into it. It's only been like, I want to say two years since Doom Patrol started. I want to say, yeah, the, the math sounds about right there. And I just distinctly remember like just them saying like, oh, last week was this thing. Or this week we had to fight a candle monster. And oh, there was sex ghosts this previous week. I'm just thinking to myself, okay, uh, this may follow your traditional every week's a new issue type ordeal, but I'm like, I'm totally fine with it. And I, I was laughing my ass off the whole time. And during this entire expositional scene, Rita just goes behind and um, basically destroys the time machine by taking off a singular piece of it, which um, does not, it doesn't, the machine doesn't work after that. So they're pretty much screwed. Uh, so from then, so she's stuck there. So she doesn't have to go back to Niles and then the timeline wouldn't change or however Doom Patrol is doing the whole like time travel thing. I know it's technically in the same multiverse as the Flash, both of them, but they didn't really acknowledge that. But so, now the new goal is like, okay, what else can we do? How else can we get to Niles? And 
Rita mentions, okay, there was a secret lever and there's a secret signal behind the bookcase. And she's like, there we go. That's where we need to go. Uh, Cliff and um, Jane immediately call themselves out of it. They got their own shit to take care of. So um, Rita's going to go with her for the signal. Larry's having a throw up thing for some reason. So he he runs up to and Cyborg sadly is left over to kind of fix the, the time machine with no logical things. So the cast puts up for a little bit before we collide a, a little bit later. Cliff is trying to get some online help, some online therapy, and uh, no one is believing it. Like, he's a robot man on a computer screen in a world of Snapchat filters. I'm not surprised that every one of them is like, I'm not doing this. I'm definitely not doing this at all. And just like, oh, come on, give the dude a chance. Come on. It would make for fun content. Um, so Cliff is feeling down about that. He goes outside to see Jane, who, is, who has built a wooden replica of, of the Chief. And, you know, is showcasing that she still has, like, some unresolved things. Because Cliff was the only one who really got to communicate with him after he died. So, the others didn't because they had their own their, their own stuff to deal with. And she still has a lot to say to him. And he, she's, she doesn't think she'll ever have the opportunity to actually talk to him again. And Cliff technically points out, well, technically, he was, still a, he was still around after he died. So, there's still a chance you could still talk to him. It's not technically over just quite yet. Um, Cyber recruits his dad to try and fix the time machine, but um, they get into immediately, immediately into family issues about you know uh, what Victor learned from last week for from his mom about like there was another choice to maybe even give you a somewhat of a much more normal life, but your father wanted you to go through the cyborg experiment, experiment as well as just recent decisions about the star, about Starlast cutting it off but turning off his weapons mode. Um, and during this argument, yeah, he, that basically does say, yeah, there were other options, but this was, like, the best option to give you a new possibility in life. But at the same time, Victor does remember, you were really dead on about the cyborg experiment, but it would never have gone clear from testing or, you know, any sort of government approval. So instead of using it on your own son, like, yeah, you saved me, but you, you were really trying to just, like, advance your own research, advance your own career, which... He's not denying it, but, you know, Cyborg just has enough of it and, and storms out. And it's the same with his dad. Um, Larry is throwing up all over the place, and he just assumes, like, well, the negosphere is gone. All the radiation is finally getting to my organs, finally, so I'm about to die. That's what he immediately assumes right now. Um, Rita's in the in the library with the, the mysterious woman, and for some very clever Sherlock Holmesing, or not really that complicated, but... Um, they finally, uh, they find the secret keyhole behind the, the signal, the signal alarm, and it opens a little compartment in the checker, in the chessboard, which has an old real tape, those like weird cartridges, I'm pretty sure I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, so she goes off to play one of them, and, um, I want to say, does Rita is involved in the scene? I don't think she is, no, she's not involved in the scene. Um, so... Uh, also, in the meantime, Rita says, also, a little fun thing to, like, notice, like, throughout this beginning, like, 20, 25 minutes, um, you start to see, like, weird maggots, bugs going around them, weird, like, zombie marks around them, like, ar something around that, and, oh, great, now, now, now I'm itching myself, damn it. So, you, you start to notice those things, they start to, like, start to get affected their personalities, start to get affected their minds, and, Rita's the first one to really figure that out, and she goes to Larry to kind of talk to him, like, about our issues, about what is next for us, and, you, like, you know, but what do we do now, and um, Larry's just honest with her about where, where they're at right now, like, you know, just taking it one day at a time, everyone's just talking about death this season, like, it, death is just, like, a common factor, I'm gonna be surprised if we even get a character named death this season, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, but slowly but surely, every one of them starts noticing some zombie-like symptoms, like, Rita wants, thinking that Victor smells good, and just the over compulsive, like, I want to eat a brain, and just like, what is, what is, makes a brain so edible? Sure, Hannibal Lecter in a movie freaking fried up a freaking piece of, of brain in front of the actual owner, I, that, that, I, I can, I, I can accept that, somewhat, this is, but it's, it's weird when Rita's licking Larry's bandages, like, how does that smell, like, oh my god, let, let's move on, before I lose my train of thought here. Um, the mysterious lady watches the video reel, which is like kind of like demo or trading videos type things from like the old days, like the 40s and 50s. There really isn't much detail at first to them. It's just a woman petting a cat and then a woman doing other things on camera. But then a bird appears and the bird turns into the mysterious woman. 
and they start doing this sort of weird synchronization um, exercise. And so the woman assumes, like, I'm part of this organization called the Sisterhood of Dots? Dates? I forgot what the name was. And also she's a bird. Which I'm just like, between her and the, her, her, her in, in terms of her performance of saying the word birds next to um, Mickey Rourke's Vanko from Iron Man 2. I think Mickey Rourke's Vanko still wins. Uh, but as soon as she comes back, I start to give everyone like, the good news about like, hey, I kind of know what I am. Everyone's in full zombie mode. They're all like ready to eat her brains out. And I'm just thinking to myself, okay, so this is probably the end of the show now, everyone. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this entire season review. It's been a short season, four episodes. Uh, but no, it's not the over yet. Um, not Crowley shows up. Beanie looks at them and is like, what the fuck have you guys gotten yourself into this time? And I'm just thinking to myself, not Crowley needs to be a series regular. Miles is gone. I mean, let's put Mark Shepard in every episode. Let's, let's, let's do that. He's regular. He can do 10. He can do it. Do it. Get paid, Mark Shepard. Get paid. <laughs> So, um, also another cool fact about this is that even though they're in zombie mode, they're so somewhat communicative. Like, we, we get subtitles, like, even when they're like, I'm hire me walking dead. Even when they're doing that, you still get subtitles. Like, they're still trying to speak English. And just, like, even Cliff in zombie mode is still, like, one of the best freaking hilarious modes I've ever seen in, my, in the history of my life. Um, not Crowley takes her, um, the, the mysterious woman to another room and basically explains what's going on right now. It turns out the guy that attacked, um, not Crowley and decapitated Niles was actually this freaking old season one guy, f um, when they were attacking the ant farm, like that, you know, that organization that kind of like normalizes everything. Yeah, those people, if you remember that. So, um, he was one of the remnants. He's still, he's still around and kicking. And, um... So what 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 happened was so he came back he he kicked Crowley's ass not Crowley's ass somehow and took Niles' head holding him hostage and he's like you don't come 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 for me I will kill the head and also the only reason why not Crowley decided to resurrect Niles' head was because there's a lot of vast mystic knowledge in his brain so that if anyone else was to resurrect his head we all be fucked which. It kind of makes sense, but it also kind of doesn't make sense. But I'm like, okay, sure, you you you, you do your own thing, not Crowley. So they take the deal. They have to, they have to go to him and you know take him on head on and see if they can rescue Niles before anything else happens. Um, the non Doom patrols that kind of mix on it. Like half of them hate hate Niles and don't even want to save him. Half of them are like, he's still our family. We still gotta go save him. It's still the right thing to do. So they they all decide to go through. Um, not not Crowley decides to suit up with weird Eskimo looking hats for him and the, and the mysterious lady uh, seeing that the, the thick warmth of this hat would prevent the smell of brain. I don't, I'm losing myself. I wouldn't even imagine me saying this at all tonight. I wasn't even imagining any of these lines to come out of my mouth. Um, so they head through the portal to some forest in the middle of God forsake where we're on earth. Um, they eventually arrive to a farmhouse, and they find, yeah, th this was the, f the same farmhouse from the video. Um, they look around, and yeah, there's there's the guy, you know, holding Niles' head, and is about to start his whole exposition. So, like, what have I been doing since the end of season one? I'm just rolling my eyes, I'm like, oh, why? Actually, it wasn't even that bad. It was actually pretty entertaining, because, like, they even make fun of the show. that so I'm just waiting for, like, someone to ask me these questions and so continue my story, which, like, I can completely relate to that. I really could. Uh, but he does give a little. But the the, the abbreviated version is that he survived the the um the the uprising at the ant farm, and everything was going okay. Um, and then this is like more like what up to your wife? What up to your kids? What's going on? Um, also the I also forgot the the mysterious woman had a plan to like bust through the the ceiling top in order to jump him and get Niles' head back by transforming to a bird. And I'm just like this is giving me some. Like, you're basically using your so your your some your so-called abilities when you have no training with them. Yeah, that's smart. That's really smart right there. Um, I forgot my train of thought. I had a very amazing segue, but I for I completely forgot it. But uh, also, oh yeah, I, I remember so. As this guy's expositional story is continuing, uh, he drops a pretty crucial fact. Why did my 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 wife leave me? Why did my kids leave me? Why am I like this right now? 
No one's asking, like, what happened? Not Crowley's like, fine, let's get it over with. What happened? He turns into a were butt. He got bit by a butt. And he became a were butt. Even saying that sounds weird. A were butt. And that transformation is probably one of the most creepiest things I've ever seen in my plan. This is exactly why I do not see horror movies. I really don't. I refuse to see a horror movie unless I'm being I'm being I'm being held together by a pillow. Uh, so he summons his army of were butts, and I'm just thinking to myself, were they in season one? Were they? I really could not tell. I really could not. Um. So, so it's so it's a fight between the undead Doom Patrol and the were butts. I gotta say, like, this is probably the weirdest bout and the weirdest use of their C of their VFX budget I've ever seen. Like, we could have done so many other cool things, but we're gonna animate a bunch of butts that want to kill people. Now that some of them kill them, it's like, we're gonna eat the butts. I don't even know what the show is anymore. I'm still enjoying it. I'm just questioning, like, what more? It's only episode four. We're not even up to the halfway mark of the season. We've already gotten to the point where like, I'm nearly at the throw-up stage. I don't know what they're going to do for the remaining six, six episodes. I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm quite scared right now. Please help me. So, they eventually defeat all the wear butts. Um, but sadly, Head Honcho gets away, but they leave behind the head. Um, Mysterious Woman is about to take the head for herself, but not Crowley takes it away. And they both realize they lost their hats during the fight, so they immediately transport themselves back to the manor. Uh, initially, um, not Crowley was about to close the port and say, fuck the, fuck the patrol. They're, they're, they're on their own, like, you know, that sort of thing. Which is not really the smartest idea, considering the fact these are four undead people with no... we This would have honestly sounded like a pandemic in the freaking Doom Patrol world. So thankfully they bring them back into the manor. Thankfully. Um, so... When they're back in the manor, they're trying to figure out what do we, what do, we do now? Like, how do we, how do we fix this? And... Um, Niles is just trying to communicate with them. It's like, you know, there's still a chance. We may still have a way to get them back to normal. But however, none of the options really suiting them right now. There, it, it really isn't. So, Niles comes up with this very bullish question. I'm just like thinking to myself, I don't even know how the math or the magic works here, but I'm like, okay, whatever. So there's something in Niles' brain, apparently, that could transform them back. Into into regular human being, there was another path, but they didn't have all the equipment or the supplies needed for that. So as long as they eat Niles' head, they'll go back to normal. I think. And the sacrifice was pretty somber. It, it really was. Like everyone's just taking their turns eating Niles. It just sounds so raw. Taking a piece of brain out, just slow motion chewing on it, and just. What, what am I watching? Just, just what is my life right now that, that I'm watching this show? I'm literally, I, I've seen this before in The Walking Dead, but there's something about like the greenness of this of this brain and just seeing the close-up shot. It, it, it's really weird for me. It, it's, it's, it's weird. It, it really is. I, I, I don't know what more to say about it, but. Oh, I, I, I literally, I, I just got a brain fart there because like my, my brain's just overloaded with like, I, I really don't know what the heck happened, but, um, that just that that happened. Um, is this the is this the true end for for Niles Cauldron? I really don't know. I, I said that like season three premiere, like that's the last we're gonna see in Niles. End of that episode. Okay, he's got the head. I'm like, oh great. Okay, this episode, I, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, I don't believe they'll use them anymore. But I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if they do. I, I really don't. So afterwards, they all recover, drinking some mouth, some mouthwash, just to get all the brains out of their freaking mouth. Um, good old, good old Cliff is still still trying to make conversation about eating the brains. As all, he did eat the brains, but he couldn't taste it because he's a robot. And he's just trying to ask everyone, so what did it taste like for you guys? And everyone's just like, let's forget about it. Let's move on. Is it never happened. It really never happened. Uh, so just to wrap um, wrap up this episode, um, Jane gets somewhat of her closure, uh, burning um, the chief's wooden stake. If that makes sense. Um, outside, 
Cliff um, signs up for. Like, it's assumed that he might have. Um, what's the, what's the disease again? Um, cerebral palsy or not cerebral palsy? I forgot the name of it. They, they had it on screen for a second. I completely forgot about it. Yeah, he has a he has a very very bad brain disease. Parkinson's. Yeah, I think it's Parkinson's. And he gets an ad from this um, from freaking City MD ripoff or I forgot what the terminology is for the freaking um, diagnosing yourself. I forgot what that was, but. Um, they have a neighboring, um, wait, am I on the right episode? Like, I'm, uh, I just, I just, like, my brain is just completely farted right now. It, it, it really has. Okay, so, the, like, on the, on the website itself, there's an ad for, like, free medicine. And I'm just like, you don't give out free medicine on the internet, especially one that's not prescribed to you by doctors. It really isn't. Um, Larry is... I think pregnant. It looks like he's pregnant. He's, he has like a really bad injury on his stomach. We don't know what it is. It's it's kind of gross and creeped out. But I'm just like, if he's pregnant with the, with the spirit's baby, I don't know what life is anymore. I really don't. And to wrap up the episode, we head back to the viewing room where um, the mysterious woman is just revisiting her her footage where she discovers that she is, um, she discovers the truth basically and. Rita's there. She's trying to comfort her. She's also trying to like ask her, "Hey, when are you gonna leave? Like, when are you out?" Then, you know, there's no real answer to that. She's just not in the place to answer that question, honestly, right now. So Rita decides to change the subject by, you know, offering her some cookies, and she leaves to go get them. Uh, before we can move on to the end of the episode, uh, Rita looks at the screen very carefully. No, no, not Rita. Um, the mysterious lady looks at the screen very carefully, and sees a younger Rita in the behind-the-scenes shot. So there's more that Rita knows than meets the eye. That, that I'll say for certain. And that ends this week's episode of Doom Patrol. So the zombie element I wasn't expecting, but it worked. Like they didn't do your traditional like everyone gets affected. It's just the core five, the core four, and no, the, the core five. And we're still we're still a superhero team. We're still active duty. We're still going out to the field to help people. And I'm just like that's not your smartest move. Like you're you're legit gonna start the zombie apocalypse in this quarter of the DC multiverse. Please don't. I'm um, getting to see Niles again in, in such a creative way was pretty fun. Um, I, I really hope we we had got maybe another episode with him like that, but um, we can't always get what we want in life. We we really can. And um, honestly, yeah, like the, the even though the zombie theme was just kind of like a little bit of like where the heck did this come from? It worked. It really did. Um, it it made sense what we're thematically they're doing. It kind of just you know keeps the suspense going, like them trying to figure out what's going on, but you know still having that sort of like good old fashioned um, adventure. I love that Crowley as always. I really do. And it, it, it the season one like return. I'm like that was so cool. That I really was. I, I freaking enjoyed this episode today. I really did. Um, so yeah, that's all I got to say on that. So let me know comments below what do you think of this week's episode. Because for me, I'm going to give this episode one and three-fourths thumbs up. I would have given it more, but I'm still a little split on the whole, like, should we have gotten rid of Timothy Dalton that early? Or should we just hold, hold out to the head stick a little bit longer? We didn't really get much of that. But hey, maybe he just wanted to, to relax a bit. Maybe, maybe that's the case, so. Who knows? Um, so I think that's going to do it for me this week, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been What's in the Two from Action X, reviewing every episode of the third season of Doom Patrol. If you want to know what we're doing normally on What's in the Two besides our Doom Patrol reviews, we are currently doing the Rookie Season 4 episode reviews each and every Monday morning after Brandon said on Sunday nights on ABC or on Hulu the next day. We're also doing Heels episode reviews each and every Tuesday morning after Brandon said on, Mon on Sunday nights on Stars. We're also doing DC Star Girl season two, season two episode reviews each and every Wednesday morning after brand new episode on Tuesday nights on the CW or for the next day on the CW app. and starting next week as well on the Friday times up. We're about to start every do Nancy Drew, no every Saturday uh, every Nancy Drew season three episode reviewed. So a lot of cool stuff on the way, uh, just a lot. Um, but anyway, if you don't care about Doom Patrol, you're in luck. We'll be back next week with another episode review. So can't wait to see what more shenanigans the Patrol gets. As it seems like they're fully done with Niles. Quote, unquote. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but again, this has been What's in the Two from Action X. Please subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash Action X videos. Like, favorite, share this 
episode if you want to, but it helps get it out there to other members of the fan patrol who are out there somewhere. It helps us be at the YouTube algorithm that hates me ever so much in life, and as well as sharing is for free here on the interwebs. Uh, please ring that bell for notification when our next episode review is live, which normally for Doom Patrol is every Friday morning. And for all you members of, of the fan patrol out there, I'll see you all next week. But until then, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and as always, peace out.